Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you another in their exciting new series of broadcasts on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Each week, Hallmark will bring you true-to-life stories of actual persons who, in their own way, have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Presented on the Hallmark Hall of Fame by our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to Hallmark Hall of Fame, respectfully dedicated to those people whose service, sacrifice, and devotion have achieved great and lasting benefits, but who are too little known to us. Today we celebrate the birth of a giant among Americans and among men, George Washington. Somehow we take for granted the beautiful and historical national shrine of Mount Vernon, where Washington lived that life so vastly important to all of us. We know about Mount Vernon, but do we know that a woman conquered pain and invalidism and criticism and red tape to save Mount Vernon for us for all time? Hey. Tonight, the Hallmark Hall of Fame proudly pays tribute to that woman of valor as we dramatize the true and deeply moving story of Anne Pamela Cunningham. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you want to remember your friends, there's one way to be sure the card you send receives an extra welcome. Look for that identifying Hallmark on the back when you select it. For words to express your feelings and designs to express your good taste. Let the hallmark on the back be your guide. For that hallmark tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Battle Circus, starring Humphrey Bogart and June Ellison with Keenan Wynn and Robert Keith. And now here is Lionel Barrymore with the first act of your Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is a story haunted by a harpsichord and a child and a giant. It's the story of a beloved home that sheltered the hope of nations and of our young nation. This is the story of the indomitable woman who saved that home as a shrine for free men. Mount Vernon was the home and Pamela Cunningham the woman. Time is 1826. A steam packet moves up the Potomac River toward Charleston. A fine moon-drenched night. At the rail stands Mrs. Louisa Cunningham with a little girl, Anne. The captain of the packet stands beside them, smoking peacefully. It's a lovely trip, Captain. A lovely river. Tis a proper bit of water for the country it washes. How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank. Anne, child, where did you ever hear that? When you took me to the play, Mother. And you remember that? I thought it was very pretty. And indeed it is. But if you're going to remember everything you hear and see, I must be careful where I take you. What a beautifully sad whistle. And do you know why, Miss? Yonder, where your precious moonlight sleeps so sound, George Washington sleeps. Is that Mount Vernon? Aye. It's so sad. About his little girl, Patsy. She hardly lived at all. That's what General Washington said when she died. You'd hardly ever think of a great, famous general crying. But he cried. That makes me love him even better. Doesn't it, you? I don't know where you get such thoughts, Anne. Doesn't it, you? Tis 
is the custom of ships passing Mount Vernon to salute the memory of General Washington. I like it. A steamboat whistle is full of grief. Anne! Such a lovely night. I never want to forget it. Or the river. Or Mount Vernon in the moonlight. Or General Washington. I don't want to ever. There was a little girl, and her name was Anne. And this little girl felt things deeply, lovingly, and unforgettingly. A quarter of a century passes, America's growing up, the Virginia legislature is in extraordinary session. The speaker is Colonel John Washington, great grand nephew of George Washington. Gentlemen, I come before this assembly with a proposal which may cause you as much dismay as it causes me chagrin and deep disappointment. I find the management of Mount Vernon beyond my means. The land does not yield well. The acreages are diminished. I can no longer even keep the house in decent repair. Gentlemen, Virginians, I have put Mount Vernon up for sale. I have offered Mount Vernon to the United States government as a national shrine. I can get neither a yes nor a no from Washington. I must turn to you. I will ask the gentleman from Albemarle what he considers the value of the house and land. I am deep in debt, but I look for no profit. I offer the house and its remaining 200 acres to the Virginia Assembly to create a shrine at $1,000 an acre. Outrageous! Outrageous, I say! Outrageous! So be it, gentlemen. I must then sell the estate to land speculators. Who I may add are more than willing to pay the price. President of this assembly may dismiss this extraordinary session at his pleasure. I am quite finished, sir. Pamela Cunningham, do you hear? Mount Vernon's in jeopardy. Anne, where are you? Ah, there she is. The little girl who aspired so early to womanhood is indeed a woman now. And again, she's at the rail of a Potomac River packet. But the little girl is a woman now, and she doesn't stand by the rail. She hasn't stood or walked for years. Nor will she ever stand again. Ah, a riding accident. But she's undaunted. A woman of valor who can find. Her name is far above rubies. Her price is far above rubies. The same captain, old now, of the same packet, sits beside her, smoking. A lovely night, Captain. At my age, Miss Cunningham, all days and all nights are precious and beautiful. So beautiful. Nothing changes. We change. No, Captain. I think that within us we remain forever little children, wandering in the dark woods, loving and trusting and believing, all with all our hearts wanting to. Perhaps. Even the whistle is the same. Aye. How clearly I remember a scene just like this. Twenty, let me see, um, twenty-six years ago. This boat. And it's at the same place, isn't it? There's Mount Vernon on yonder back. Unchanged. And unchanging. Except there'll be no Mount Vernon now, miss. I don't know what you mean. Colonel John Washington can support it no longer. It has been offered for sale to some land speculators. Oh, no! Ye may grieve, Whistle, ye may grieve. But that's quite wrong. Mount Vernon was his home. He, he lived there and he loved it so. And he died there. And when his daughter Patsy died, he cried. The general cried. Oh, don't they understand? His life is still in there and his love and his tears and, and the sound of harpsichords. 
It isn't changed. Ma'am, it... It's just all over. No. No, it's not over. It will never be over. If it is over, then death is final and there is no immortality. But it isn't over. If it's over, then the blood is dried and blown away from Monmouth and Bunker Hill and Brandywine and Trenton and the Delaware are forgotten. If it's over, then King's Mountain never happened. And the bloody footprints of our men have melted with the snow of Valley Forge. And pain and sacrifice and heroism are illusions. But it isn't over. Mount Vernon isn't done with. Not while I live. Or after. Never. How did the psalmist say, and Pamela Cunningham, let my right hand forget her cunning, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem? Just a moment, we will return to the second act of our story of Anne Pamela Cunningham. Have you a friend or relative who is convalescing behind a sick room door? Well, even if you aren't allowed to visit him, there's one sure way to get your wishes through day after day. I mean, by mailing a series of Hallmark seven-day cheer cards. You see, seven-day cheer cards are everything their name implies. They're bright, amusing cards that come neatly packaged together so you can send one at a time for seven consecutive days. Right now, you can choose from three distinct types of cheer cards at the store where you buy all your Hallmark cards. There are riddle cards for those who enjoy guessing the answers to catchy questions, and Hallmark mystery cards for your friends who like whodunits, and even a feminine flower bowl card with seven pretty posies to be slipped into place. Yes, and new Hallmark seven-day cheer cards are being designed all the time, so the variety will grow and grow. Remember, you'll know them instantly by the Hallmark and crown on the package the symbol you always insist on, when you care enough to send the very best. And now, here is Lionel Barrymore. In 1853, Anne Pamela Cunningham who couldn't walk or stand, began a long march to a distant goal. Anne's body was hurt, but the spirit was young and intact and indomitable. At home once again, Anne fretted about the impending fate of Mount Vernon. Then... Mother, will you bring me pen and ink and my lap board, please? I'm going to write a letter to the governor of Virginia. <laughs> What does the governor reply? He says, preposterous. Oh, tell me. He says he will recommend that the Virginia legislature purchase Mount Vernon to be transformed into a state agricultural college. Well, it's better than allowing it to go to total ruin. Wait. However, His Excellency continues, however, the sum which Colonel Washington asks for the estate remains $200,000. Oh. And before we can act on our proposal, Colonel Washington must reduce his price materially. Oh, Mother, nothing, nothing will be done, can't you see? Oh, but $200,000 is a staggering amount of money. Well, staggering or not, we must get it. Oh, I do wish I could tell you how, dear. I know how. How? The women. Oh, dear. I can see that look in your eyes. Pen and ink and lapboard, is it? Oh, Mother. I must rally all the women of America. I must write to them through their newspapers and clubs and organizations. 
to build a greater organization. Yes, to be unladylike if necessary and use their names and lift their voices in public. Oh, no. An organization, a united patriotic womanhood. Um, uh, uh, Mount Vernon Ladies Association of the Union. Something like that. No. That. That's it. And now your pen and ink and left board, I presume. <laughs> Ladies, I could weep to see you gathered here in my home. You have come and gathered round my chair, and I'm grateful. It is most fitting that our first meeting takes place today on Washington's birthday. Thank you, dear ladies, for, for almost $300 collected already toward, <laughs> toward the mere 200000 that we need. <laughs> The ghosts of Lexington and Concord and, and White Plains and Valley Forge, thank you. And the child spirit of Patsy Washington, thanks you. The tall spirit of her father, thanks you. And last, and oh, so least, I thank you. Oh, and child. It's all right, Mother. The first meeting of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association of the Union is adjourned. <laughs> Anne, dear. What is it, Mother? Oh, can you stop writing long enough to read what people are writing you? All those letters for me? Look, there's a letter from Edward Everett. Edward Everett? There it is. President Fillmore, Secretary of State? Write me? Unless you know of another Edward Everett. But he's a scholar, a writer, a great man. Why would Why he... don't you open the letter? Oh, yes. <laughs> Rather a good notion, don't you think? A check. How much? Oh, Mother... $69,064. Impossible. Naturally. Read the letter. Read the check. <gasps> 69000 Impossible. Oh, Mother. He's been touring the nation delivering a lecture about George Washington. He feels that he owes the money so earned to our Mount Vernon movement. In addition, he says, I hope to realize $10,000 by contributions to the New York Ledger which will go toward the preservation of Mount Vernon. $80,000. $80,000 plus the three hundred we've collected, subtracted from the $200,000. Oh, Mother, we've got it. We've practically got it. <laughs> oh, only another paltry $120,000. That's we'll all. We'll get it, though, I'm sure now. Who else writes this, Mother? A letter from a Colonel John Washington. Oh, what exciting words. <laughs> <laughs> would you have dreamed that your little girl would grow up to receive letters from people like... What is it, Anne? Oh, no. What is it, dear? Colonel Washington says he's been criticized severely for wanting to sell Mount Vernon. He says that he won't sell Mount Vernon now, except to Virginia or to the federal government. But they've already turned him down. Of course. And he won't sell to you. But he will sell to me. Pen and ink and lapboard? No. Our traveling clothes and boat passage to Mount Vernon. Now, mm -hmm. Anne, you can't make that trip anymore. You're too tired and ill. He will sell to me. I am very sorry to have inspired this difficult trip for you and your mother, Miss Cunningham. Do we get Mount Vernon, Colonel Washington? On that score, too. I'm sorry. That's not enough, Colonel. I didn't come to hear re your regrets. The money you ask is in sight. I call upon you to consent to the delivering of Mount Vernon into the care and devotion of our association. I realize how worthily your ladies feel on the matter. I, I cannot sell to you. Colonel Washington. Miss Cunningham, I would ask you and your mother to accept Mount Vernon's hospitality before you leave, but the house and rooms are in such disrepair, I feel I cannot... You are dismissing us, is that it? The matter is closed. Is that it, sir? We still have a carriage to carry you and your effects to the landing. Except, sir, that my mother and I would have to sleep on the wharf. 
There is no other boat tonight. The train, then? I am unable to travel by train. Then, by all means, madam, accept the somewhat threadbare hospitality of Mount Vernon for the night. Oh, thank you, Colonel. I'm so tired. So tired. Strange, eerie night for Anne Pamela Cunningham. Imaginative, impressionable little Anne, grown up to pain and suffering, dreaming restlessly in the dying home of General George Washington. What ghosts tenanting her dreams. What whisperings and ghostly tinkle of harpsichords. First in war, first in peace. Files and columns of tattered barefoot men carrying the long rifles of Ticonderoga, White Plains, Saratoga, and voices. Patsy, my little Patsy, she hardly lived at all. He cried. That makes me love him even better, doesn't it, you? First in war, first in peace, first in the hearts of his countrymen. Mount Vernon, I never want to forget it. Never, 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 never. Never. Anne? Anne, are you still awake? Oh. No, Mother. I had a dream. Good night. And you, Miss Cunningham, did you sleep well? The excitement at being under this roof and disappointment that I'm helpless to preserve it are poor sedatives, Colonel Washington. Again, my regrets. I, too, had a restless night. Not on my account, I hope. Yes, on your account. Oh? Miss Cunningham, my great uncle fought not only the enemy, but his own Congress to achieve his victory for all of us. As you have fought the Congress and the Virginia legislature and a welter of outworn convention to be a woman against overwhelming odds. This house that shelters a tradition of such warring against odds will be delivered into the care of those who understand the price of victory. It is yours, madam. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Not just for me, but for America. For America and her generations of grateful children. The generations to come who will look at it always as a symbol of their heritage. Oh, thank you. of valor, who can find her prices above rubies, and Pamela Cunningham succeeded against appalling handicaps in preserving the home of George Washington for all America to love and enjoy. Her Mount Vernon Ladies Association of the Union is the oldest woman's patriotic group in America. It continues active today, administering the affairs of this national shrine where millions of Americans have received inspiration. And Pamela Cunningham, a patriot and a woman of valor indeed. I'll be back in a moment to tell you about the fascinating person we're going to honor next week on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Now here's Frank Goss, who knows how you can make a gift doubly appreciated, and I, one, would like to know how. 
Do you know someone who is especially clever at wrapping gifts? Someone who seems to capture the mood of the occasion or the personality of the receiver every time? Well, you know, you don't have to be an artist to give your gifts that special touch of thoughtfulness. All you need to do is select your wrappings at a fine store where Hallmark cards are sold. In the sparkling Hallmark gift paper collection, you'll find patterns for each special day, many of them with tags and seals to match. You can choose bold, tweedy types for men, dainty, feminine designs for women, and enchanting gift papers for the children with all over prints of toys or tots or nursery rhyme characters. Yes, and here's a suggestion for you busy homemakers. Why not stock up on extra Hallmark gift wrappings for last-minute presents the next time you shop? It's such an easy thing to do. And you'll save precious time when an emergency arises. You will recognize Hallmark gift wrappings instantly by the Hallmark and Crown on the package. The familiar symbol you always look for when you carry enough to send the very best. And now, back to your Hallmark host, Mr. Barrymore. Yes, yes. He gives not best who gives most. But he gives most who gives best. Now, a fellow named Warwick said that many, many years ago, but it's still very true. The manner of giving shows the real character of the giver far more than the gift itself. And when you make your gift look real pretty, well, that certainly is the gracious way to present it. Oh, so many times I, I've heard ladies say, my, that package looks so beautiful, I hate to open it. Well, next week, the makers of Hallmark Cards have wrapped up some fine entertainment for you. We're going to tell you the story of Captain Jack Jewett, who, by his patriotic and daring action, influenced the course of our nation's history at a crucial moment when the collapse of the American Revolution seemed imminent. Now, I hope you'll all be listening to this exciting and adventurous story. Our Hallmark Hall of Fame is every Sunday... Our producer-director is William Gay. Our music was composed and conducted by David Rose. And our script tonight was written by Milton Geiger. Until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. The part of Anne Pamela Cunningham was played by Lorene Tuttle. Margaret Brayton was her mother, and the little girl was Anne Whitfield. Others in the cast, Ted DeCorsia, Polly Bear, and Ben Wright. Every Sunday, Hallmark Cards presents two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. The Hallmark Hall of Fame, on radio with host Lionel Barrymore and on television with Miss Sarah Churchill. Consult your paper for time and station. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when we present another true-to-life story of actual persons who in their own way have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Next Sunday, we honor Captain John Jewett on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.